This is just technology. It's better technology. All you got to do is buy it and wait for the rest of the world to figure it out. A new Bitcoin all-time high is coming. So there was some huge news out today regarding Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency space and in today's video I'm going to lay out why I believe we are going to see new all-time highs by either the end of the year or quarter 1 2022. Today, Brian Armstrong, who is CEO of Coinbase, which is the largest US cryptocurrency exchange, announced that they received approval to buy over $500 million of cryptocurrency to add to their balance sheet. And additionally, moving forward, they will be investing 10% of all profits into crypto. This is huge. Not only half a billion dollar initial purchase, but Coinbase is a cash monster. So the 10% over time is going to be massive. Additionally, he added he expects his percentage to keep growing over time. So another huge company joining the race of adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Last week, I highlighted this data out from Willy Wu in which he shows the overall institutional adoption of Bitcoin. As you can see, we have really only seen it happen over the last 12 months where it has gone completely parabolic. This is truly just the tip of the iceberg. Imagine what we will be looking at in 12 or 24 months down the line. An investor who pointed this exact point out before the Coinbase news was announced was Bitcoin King Michael Saylor. Here, he explains that when you have institutional adoption at this scale, all models are invalidated. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we're going to cover some of the most recent on-chain Bitcoin data. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. A hundred trillion dollars of money is flowing into Bitcoin and everything you've studied about Bitcoin in the past 15 years, all billion pieces of information are irrelevant. What's it's a, One of my beefs that I have with the crypto community and with the traders is they're very myopically self-centered and they're focused upon their experiences and they try to relate everything to what they've lived through and none of them hasn't expressed an opinion as to whether or not a fixed income mutual fund will buy Bitcoin. And so, my point is, if there's a hundred trillion dollars of money in fixed income mutual funds, whether they will buy Bitcoin, which you don't know, is more relevant than everything you do know and everything you've ever done and every single success you've ever had. They're all irrelevant compared to whether or not someone that is not in your ecosystem chooses to enter with amount of energy which is 100x greater than the amount of energy you currently have under your control. Like for example, what if I told you that all of the data of every trade of Bitcoin and Ethereum since the beginning of time and every other crypto trade and every, every result and outcome of everybody in the crypto ecosystem is all irrelevant data. The relevant data is whether or not one dude with $10 billion decides to buy Bitcoin tomorrow. And that's not in any of your charts and any of your data. So you can look at any data you want, but, but saying, well, we look at data can be a crutch because people just look at their data. Uh, what I'm observing is that if I look at Twitter, I look at what I see and most of the, of the chatter, people tend to be very myopically focused upon their own uh, trading data and like they want to extrapolate Bitcoin's future from Bitcoin's past or they want to extrapolate some crypto from the crypto past. And so they tend to take a very closed system view. They, sent, they think that they're a closed system. And the, I take an open system view, which is, for example, what will every politician in the world say? What will all the, re the, the, the relevant system, the relevant issue is what about the $400 trillion that's not in crypto? That's relevant, right? The other, the other point is I, I think that most of the traders, they're not technologists. So they're, may, they're, they're trading the stuff or they're, they're talking like they're thinking it's commodity and they're comparing it to other commodities or other things they can trade. But like, for example, let's take Apple. Apple was the winner 
and I, and you could have not you could not have predicted Apple was going to be the winner in 2010 based upon all the historic trading data of every company imaginable. But you could have predicted it would be the winner if you simply used the phone. If you used the Apple iPhone and you compared it to Windows and the internet, you could have said it's very obvious this is a better user experience and one day a billion people will want that. And if you combine that with one other observation, I travel around the world and I see the app, Apple software is better and I see every wealthy person is using an Apple phone and an iPad. And the conclusion is Apple is going to win the entire affluent market and then they're going to build the entire ecosystem of Apple everything. And you're extrapolating from a, from a product experience about where the world is headed. Just like Google Maps. You look at Google Maps say, this is better than a physical map. You could have said one day 5 billion people will want to use Google Maps because it's better. But there is no data in, in the trading world that you could look at that would support that. You would, the data set that would support it would be how many people live on, the, on Earth, how many people will, can eventually afford a $50 Android phone. Mm -hmm. right? You could, if you look outside of the system and you pull macro trends and technology trends from outside the system then you can forecast the impact of technology but if, but if you look inside the system then all you're going to do is look at trading patterns and you're you know you're you're playing with these closed models and i just feel like the closed models don't really give you they don't give you that much insight they're generally pessimistic and they end the people that have an interest in pushing them, they they typically want people to trade in and out of things. If I said to you, you can build your building with steel or you can build your building with clay or bricks. I mean, I mean, isn't there a different observation, which is like, I have a gun, you have a bow and arrow. Here's a gun. Let me shoot it. OK, are, are, are you going to show me the statistical history of all the fights with bows and arrows versus guns or are you just going to show me the gun with bitcoin you could just give property to five billion people right but i mean like, the but, but, like but, the historic but, roi of bitcoin is isn't really as relevant as giving the thing to five billion people right you got all these charts but the but you're still missing like the big thing the big thing that happened was the currency collapsed 37 percent in the last 12 months all your charts are an environment where the currency was collapsing seven percent. Like once you go past before March of 2020, the currency was weakening at seven percent in North America. I'm just saying that like you live in charts and you live in, if you live in charts and you want 10 year charts, well, you didn't have 10 years of the currency collapsing at 37 percent a year. You have one year. Okay, and so if you have jarring, jolting changes. You didn't have institutions buying Bitcoin for the 10 years. Institutions started buying Bitcoin in August of last year, eight months ago, nine months ago. So, so when you actually spend tons of time looking at historic trading charts, you underweight technology and socioeconomic developments that are material and you overweight uh, you overweight statistical patterns in the closed system as it no longer is. So there, Michael Saylor explains the avalanche of money that is coming for Bitcoin in the form of institutional capital. I am convinced that we are bound to see all-time highs, not just in Bitcoin, but all over the crypto space before the year is out, if not early next year, but let me know what you think in the comments. Now, for some recent on-chain Bitcoin data that suggests where Bitcoin is heading short term, out from analyst Will Clement, we have some data on Bitcoin supply being held by strong hands, i.e. Bitcoin addresses that have little history of selling. As we can see, another big uptick with holders using the slight dip in price to continue to stash up. Anyway guys, hope today's video brought you some value. The future definitely looks bright in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you all in the next video and as always, have a great day.